What about the good old hands-on anecdotal experience from our online steroid daddy, Vigor Steve, who we literally forced to come down to testosterone only and not take anything else, not even an aromatase inhibitor, because we wanted to see if epicatogen has some sort of suppressive effect on serum estradiol levels. Let's start reviewing scientific evidence when it comes to exercise, because that's the reason, the primary reason, why we're using epicatogen, not only to increase folosatin levels, but to see if it has any performance enhancing benefits. Luckily for us, the benefits regarding an increase in performance and exercise capacity has been indexed in this study, performed by German et al., published on January 22nd, 2024, titled New Trends to Treat Muscular Atrophy, a Systemic Review of Epicatogen. Now, I've highlighted all of the studies which looked into epicatogen, but not the studies which used cacao powder or dark chocolate, as they also contain other polyphenols, which might offer a contributing beneficial effect. The scientific evidence shows that epicatogen anywhere between 25 milligrams to 400 milligrams daily, either in a single serving or administered twice daily at half the dose, obviously, for one to 24 weeks, suppressed mitochondrial adaptation to exercise, increased mitochondrial biogenesis, it lowers myostatin, it increases folostatin, and increases strength, all in human subjects. And with the animal models, whether that's mice or rats, they received one milligram epicathogen per one kilogram of body weight once or twice daily for 14 days to 15 weeks. C-reactive protein levels decreased, not sure about that. Antioxidant status increased, mitochondrial function and biogenesis improved, exercise performance improved, skeletal muscle size increased, vascular endothelial growth factor increased, even though a computer model showed that it potentially blocks vascular endothelial growth factor activity, so maybe it actually does, and thus uh, vascular endothelial growth factor concentrations in the bloodstream go up because it can bind to its specific receptor and aging-related biomarkers and sarcopenia was reduced, suggesting anti-aging effects that epicatogen potentially has. It's a great study, give it a read, it's linked down below, as always. Okay, enough with the scientific evidence and the boring study overlays. What about the good old hands-on anecdotal experience from our online steroid daddy, Vigor Steve, who we literally forced to come down to testosterone only and not take anything else, not even an aromatase inhibitor, because we wanted to see if epicatogen has some sort of suppressive effect on serum estradiol levels, like we expect with YK11 suppressing estradiol levels by inhibiting the aromatase enzyme selectively. Um, so I didn't use an aromatase inhibitor. You guys literally wanted to torture me. My serum estradiol levels are off the scale. That's why my face is so freakishly around and I'm holding so much water. Actually, it's quite doable. It's quite okay. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting experiment running testosterone only and coming off everything else just to please you guys. And uh, this is basically what I did for Operation Folostatin. This was the base protocol. I took Bayer Testifier and half an ampule Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Half an ampule contains approximately 1.25 milliliters. That's how much milliliters I get. Out of a Bayer Testifier and ampule, they're generally overfilled. So that's 156.3 milligrams sub-Q upon waking Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for a total weekly intake of 625 milligrams testosterone inotate. Nothing else, no anivar, no primabolin, no mastrone, no dianabol, no, nothing else, guys. Just 625 milligrams testosterone, that's it. And then alongside, well, if you want to count this, uh, DHEA, right, 25 milligrams upon waking and 12.5 milligrams before bed. As you can see from my blood work that serum DHEA sulfate levels are nice towards the top of the reference range. I took uh, telmasartan to control my blood pressure, 40 milligrams upon waking, azetamide to control my lipid levels, 10 milligrams upon waking, uh, fluvoxamine, 50 milligrams before bed to control my mood, because it's not the greatest sometimes, especially while dieting, especially while taking the growth hormone out and all the other stuff out, right? I have to take something. God. And uh, I took 10 milligrams methylene blue upon waking five times weekly on workout days. Now, there might be potential uh, SSRI and MAO inhibiting serotonin syndrome drug interaction there, but at 50 milligrams fluvoxamine and 10 milligrams methylene blue a couple times per week, I did not experience any symptoms of serotonin syndrome, luckily. Now, and the nootropics are uh, as needed, so that's either 10 milligrams oral dihexa, 10 milligrams oral nupept, 50 milligrams bromatane, 500 micrograms internasal semex, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? I still need my nootropics to get some work done. I mean, if I can't take nootropics, then what's the point of making these deep dives? These deep dives would take twice as long because I need to force feed all of the scientific evidence in my head and draw appropriate conclusions to make entertaining content and informative content for you guys. So don't take my nootropics away. Don't you ever dare. 
Okay, uh, the over-the-counter supplements were as follows. The details are on the screen. Uh, let that scroll a little bit, right? Um, just as a reminder, I had leg surgery, so that's why my vitamin D3 and um, vitamin K complex intake is reasonably high. I had leg surgery, I had an orthopedic plate removed, and thus I have seven screw holes left in my leg. So I need the excess bone mineralization to fill that hole up as fast as possible so I can actually train legs heavy again because, well, I've been doing five plates on the leg press. <laughs> that's not... That's really not enjoyable, I'll tell you that. Uh, let's see, what other adjustments did I make? I reduced my Tutka intake to see if that would have um, an overlapping effect on my liver enzymes, which again, my liver enzymes went up a little bit. And I took a couple of compounds out, which uh, might improve a mitochondrial function like quercetin, for example, but I felt that that did not do anything in the total picture. I mean, comparing quercetin to methylene blue, that's not a fair comparison. So all the details are on the screen. I let that scroll a little bit. And again, as a quick reminder, I'm taking natokinase, seropeptase, and lumerokinase to help break apart the scar tissue that I have on my lower chest because I did gynecomastia surgery at the same time with liposuction because I had stubborn fat that I never got away. So I did the surgery route, I had the easy way out, even though it was quite painful and expensive. So I'm taking these uh, peptidases to help break apart scar tissue, which now there's a lot more detail on my lower chest, as you'll see from that before and after pictures. Now, to all of this, uh, for a month, I added the following minus epicatogen protocol coming from this over-the-counter supplement containing about 180 milligrams epicatogen uh, extracted from green tea with a certain amount of bioporine to enhance the absorption, allegedly. I took a 90% minus epicatogen extract. Day 1 to 10 of this experiment, I took 180 milligrams orally upon waking daily. Day 11 to 20, I took 180 milligrams orally upon waking and before bed, so that's a total of 360 milligrams daily and then the last 10 days of this experiment day 21 to 30 i ramped up the dose to 180 milligrams one capsule every single meal for a total of 900 milligrams daily yeah i'm gonna say honestly that i did not notice much of a difference between 360 milligrams to 900 milligrams i don't think that was warranted i just wanted to see if um, it could offer a beneficial effect, but there was a clear difference switching from 180 milligrams to 360 milligrams. So that would be my sweet spot recommendation. This is my diet throughout the entire experimentation period. That did not change, even though uh, some of the meals I changed for uh, tuna, for example, or sea bass or another fish source, or sometimes I would just stick with steak or chicken. But most of the time I had a combination of 150 milligrams ground beef with 25 milligrams ground beef liver, 150 milligrams ground uh, chicken breast, and then vegetables on top, 100 grams of kale, 100 grams of green beans, 50 grams of sauerkraut. But if I switched to a fish source, I would replace that with kimchi, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to help with the cooking of the kale and the green beans, a tablespoon of chia seed, and then a healthy dose of Himalaya pink salt with iodized table salt. And I would eat that approximately two to three times, four times daily, unless I switched some meals around. Again, I have some digestive issues, which I'm still trying to figure out. All of the foods that I eat on a daily basis frequently, they digest very well for me. I can still pull a vacuum at the end of the day at about 2,600 calories. Sometimes I eat a little bit more, add in a little bit of mixed nuts uh, for the epicatogen or plus catagen content, obviously. I need to uh, make a dose the epicatogen if possible. Um, so I would add in a little bit of make nuts based on my activity, but overall my fat loss journey was a success because I got significantly leaner. And let's see, meal four post-workout was uh, 300 grams of salmon, 50 grams of kimchi, a tablespoon of chia seeds, and 200 grams of blueberries. Sometimes I would eat a little bit more fruit for, let's say, 2,600 calories to 3,000 calories over the day. I followed the following workout split, daily fasted cardio. I know everybody gets allergic from that, but that uh, certainly works for me to get leaner. On Monday, I would train chest, triceps, shoulders. On Tuesday, I would train quads, hamstrings, adductors, glutes, and calves. Wednesday, I rest. Then Tuesday, I would do a push day again. And a Friday, I would do a quad day again. And then Saturday, after taking months, 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 months off from tearing back, because, well, you can see it from the front. That's how fat it is. Um, I would uh, train back again for the last uh, couple of weeks just to get a little bit of back mass going and uh, get those lats flaring nicely. Okay, so back rear delts and biceps on Saturday. And then Sunday, I would rest and have my refeed and cheat day. 